Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our match preview for the game versus Denmark away in Copenhagen. I'm joined by Peter from footballfaithful.com and also joined by Paddy Ward from the Republic of Ireland Sports Club in Mullingar. Firstly, lads, thanks very much for coming on. But uh, how are we feeling coming into this game? There's a lot of history there. Obviously, the most notable game that's you know springs to mind is the is the five one. So. Um, Paddy, how are you, how are you feeling? You're, I know you're going too, Denmark. That's right, yeah, flying up on Friday. Uh, looking forward to it, I think, listening to what Mick has to say. He's going there, the team are going there in good spirits, hoping hoping for the best. I don't think there's a lot between the two teams, apart from, obviously, Ericsson. Um, moment of magic, but hopefully, I'm hoping, Glenn Whelan may be there, will do the man-marking job on Ericsson and... It's 50-50 from there, I think. Yeah, what is that? Yeah, yeah I'm kind of optimistic, to be honest with you. I, the last game against Georgia was the, the first time I'd enjoyed an Ireland game in, in a long time. And uh, just the way the games have fallen. I know we played well against Georgia, and that's the kind of game where we expect Ireland to come out and play a bit of football. This one, personally, it's just all about the result. The way the games are falling, we have the chance to kind of say we get a draw there, beat Gibraltar. We can build a big lead before we, you know, before granted Switzerland will have games in hand, so will Denmark, but we'll have really have something. To yeah, we'll have, we'll have made that advantage. Yeah, well. point on the board, as such, you know. So. Yeah, but I think a lot of things uh, like you know, since Seamus Coleman's been back, we haven't conceded against Denmark as well. So which I think it was a big loss, the five-one game. Um, psychologically, they might still have a, an advantage over that, but I think you know if we're kind of looking at the the, the back four team and and Darren Randolph as well. Was you could call it back five with him in there, but if you're looking at that, I think it's pretty settled now. I, I, as much I don't think a lot of people would like to see Kyo in there, but I think a lot of people would rather see Egan. But I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Kyo hasn't really let us down, and he's probably been involved. I think he's been involved in those nil nil games as well. So again, and he mentioned it in the press conference today. You know, he, he, it does give you a bit of confidence when you keep clean sheets against these sides, yeah. and as you say. Other than Christian Eriksen, I mean, I'm not really that troubled. I mean, you have, he was what, he had 35 appearances this season, eight goals in the Premier League and the Champions League. Then he has 12 appearances, two goals and played against Liverpool last week and didn't really do anything in my, my eyes anyway. No, he's very poor in the Champions League final. You're kind of hoping that that form continues into our game. As I said, it's the 5-5-1 five, the five game and even the Nations League game that didn't really mean anything. But still, I think our players will still have it in their head about the 5-1. Not on a negative way, but saying, let's get a bit of pride back here. and let, Let's try and do something. Mm. What, what do you yeah, think? well, I think the party line coming out all the time all the time this week was that, you know, it's another game, all the rest. But I'm not personally buying that. Them players, you know, Shane Duffy, we were at the presser in the yeah. other the other day. Shane Duffy admitted it was the lowest point of most of their careers. You, you don't forget that overnight. Uh, yeah. This is a competitive fixture. And I think they're not saying that they're gonna, not saying that they're gonna go out and it's gonna be the be all and end all. But they'll definitely want to prove that there isn't that big gap that you were saying because, like you said, like the likes of Yusef Pool, Poulsen, uh, Shona, good players, but they're not gonna be rocking up to a kind of top six club in the Premier League, uh, you know, anytime soon. So well, Shona's uh, been around for a while. He's never really like kicked on. I know he might have had a good Champions League, yeah. you know. This season, but other than that, he's never really done anything of note uh, against us as well. I think when you have that the five one game as well, the fact that we went ahead in the game, and the atmosphere f while we were ahead for those twenty odd minutes, we were ahead. The place was hopping, was rocking, and to go from that to such a low and conceding so many goals, and let's be honest about it, I think Ericsson was, he was the architect that night of the downfall. Yeah, yeah but at the same time, I mean, O'Neill was the arch, you know. The architect of his own downfall yeah. at the same time too. I mean the substitutions. It is what it is, but let's not like let's not dwell on that bit. What were we gonna say? Yeah, I just think I think with Ericsson, um, he is the one world class operator out there. Um, and we gave him the freedom of the Aviva that night. That's why he he you know scored a, a very. You say his first goal though. You know, no, no keeper's gonna save that. No, yeah, very well yeah. taken hat trick. To be yeah. fair to him, you know, and he does have that quality. Now you'll you'll often see players playing internationally. He's playing with much better players with Spurs, the movement, everything, than he'll, yeah. he'll have with Denmark. So there's probably a lot of pressure on him. He's their biggest star as well. You never know how he's going to perform. I don't personally see Ireland going to man-marking him. I don't think it happens as much in the modern game anymore. You well, know, I, I can see from what 
from what I heard and what I gathered from Mick's press conference, it seems as though he's going to have Glenn Wheel and Matt Mar- Martin. I'd say be and more... let the rest play. That's pretty much what he said. Yeah, I, I see. Yeah, you might, you might well be right, but I just think in it, kind of in the modern game, it's more about marking spaces. They might let him drift out. Just, look, he's world class. He could technically hurt you from anywhere. Yeah. But you know, like when I remember growing up watching, like Lee Carsley actually follow Dennis Bergkamp around the pitch. You know that doesn't happen. So much. I think mm. Mourinho did it with her, uh, Herrera and Hazard a couple of times. But it, it's more, it's more pouncing on him when he comes into certain spaces in between the lines. You can't be letting him in. Yeah. There, but you know but did he not do it with the Georgian number ten, which is what he said he would do? Uh, that's exactly what he said. Make it said. You know, we, we happen to work. We did it against the Georgia number ten. Yeah, now he's, he's looking. He's it. looking for something similar. Yeah, yeah and, and in fairness to Whelan, if he follows him for an hour or years. seventy minutes, and he's kept him quiet, he's done his job. And if the legs go at that stage, yeah, but I don't think his legs will go. I mean, he 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 made it a fact today in the press conference that he missed one game all season. Mm-hmm. He keeps himself in great shape. Gets a lot of unwarranted stick at times. You know, it's a hard position to play. Uh, in my opinion, that's you know that. Defensive midfield. I think Mick McCarthy is probably the first Ireland manager that's actually played him right. Yeah. I think the other managers before that were playing him wrongly. And when you're playing a long ball system and you're playing centre mid, and I'm sure you've played football in your lives before, and if you've ever been played centre mid in a team that kicks the ball and you're constantly getting overlooked, yeah. like what are you supposed to do? Get jump up like Peter Crouch and and, and win the ball in midfield because you're not going to do that. Like people have to be realistic at the same time. Giving them. You know abuse, but you know at least back up your abuse. If your abuse is is you know intellectual and you're showing what he's actually done wrong in games, instead of just going, oh, Glenn Whelan's fucking shit. That's that's all everyone yeah, he ever can't, is. He can't pass the but, ball but, forward. But, but it's not, either back or side of But us, no yeah. one actually gives an educated view on yeah. what he actually does wrong. You see, the problem is that that role, even in club football now, it's one of the roles where people criticise players the most because it's an unglamorous job. You're even when they're on the ball, like you're saying, oh, he doesn't pass the ball forward. They've been told, sorry, yeah, well, <laughs> they've been told to keep it simple, to just keep yeah. it ticking over. So they're actually, that's why players like that are actually often quite highly rated by their coaches, but the fans are expecting everybody to go out there and start pinging balls and all, but they're actually very disciplined positionally and stuff. So I, I, he's not the only kind of defensive midfielder that gets a, a, a lot of stick. You see it in the club game a lot well, as well. It's let's just say, an, except if you're in uh, Gallant Cante, he's the only one. Yeah. If, Eric, if Ericsson does nothing on Friday, are we going to be saying Ericsson had a bad game or are we going to be saying that Glenn Whelan played well? Well, I think a lot of people after the Jordan game, and this is what I was saying about Mick playing players right, and I think, again, he touched on it with Conor Hurin. Again, another player who's been played probably wrongly by previous managers, and he came in and said, it's nice to actually have a manager who kind of knows the way I play. Yeah. The fact that he identified that Whelan and Hurin were, were a midfield partnership yeah. at Villa also helped. And... Like as well, you look at Hendrick, like the positions he's been taking up, he's probably been getting the best out of him. So you look at those three midfield positions, which I think would be the midfield three yeah. against Denmark, unless there's an injury between now and then. Um, but I think, you know, he's he's getting the best out of those players in an Ireland jersey, albeit it's only been two games and people say, oh, it was two one nils, but whatever. Like you have Hendrick scoring goals, you have uh, Hurin scoring goals, and you have Glenn Whelan probably had the best game since uh, someone said today, he man marked uh, Zlatan in the Euros. Yeah, so um, I just think, as I say, he gets a lot of unwarranted stick. For me, the, the game is going to be, for us, is is it's going to be won in midfield. And I we, think so, we, yeah. have to, we have to be at it. And if we're not at it, I think we will be lucky to scrape a draw. Or we need to nick a goal. Whatever we do, we just need to score a goal. I don't care if it goes in off Shane Duffy's arse. Yeah. We need to score a goal. I think we will both agree on yeah, that. Like, absolutely. Yeah. Like I'll still take a point. I would still take a nil-nil mm-hmm. away. Of course I would. Um, but I think we have to be scoring. Mm-hmm. I think it sends a message to them as well. Do you know what I mean? I think the massive difference is as well, under O'Neill and Keane, when you've seen both Georgia games, we sat back and let them have the ball. Whereas in the last game, we pressed high. Yeah. And well, we got in their the, faces. Yeah, yeah, and the knock... <clears throat> They knocked an awful lot of long ball compared to what they've done when we played the last two games. Like, I don't know, we had had 60 or 70% possession. Yeah. Georgia, do you know what I mean? If we can do that against Denmark on Friday and press high, yeah, we're going to force them to play the long ball as well. I know they have a big man up top, top Jorgensen. We have two good lads in the air, I think, at centre half as well. Yeah, well, you look at the performance of Shane Duffy against Wales that time, uh, Man Mountain, when McLean scored that goal. Yeah. I mean, 
if you want someone who's going to just head balls all day, he's the perfect yeah. man. You know, there's a reason we got Brighton Player of the Year. Albeit they didn't have the best season, but he individually had a very good season. Irish uh, Republic of Ireland Player of the Year yeah. also. Do you know what I mean? He's had it. He's come off the back of a good season. Um, personally, maybe not as a collective unit, but personally he has. But their creative players will be. Obviously, Eriksson showing a uh, Thomas Delaney, who's yeah. at Dortmund, um, Pioni Sisto, um, Yusuf Paulson, Casper Dahlberg, and Jorgensen. But I don't know how many. I don't. I haven't heard any news about them carrying injuries or anything. Like that. I haven't heard no. anything out of that camp. But see, I, they're as as Mick said, a lot a lot of the way they play is they try to tuck their wingers in and bring the full backs on. Yeah. And I just said, if if we're at it and we're pushing them high. There's yeah. no way those fullbacks can come forward. Yeah, but I do think as well, I think it would be key if we can get the likes of Coleman and um Stevens who probably you know, at this chase at this stage are our first choice yeah. fullbacks. I think if if we can get them forward it'll also push their wingers back. So Absolutely. we need to match it as well. And I do think Ed Stevens next season will be one of the best fullbacks in the Premier League. Yeah. You look at Matt Doherty came in from the championship and skyrocketed once he got over you're looking, looking at Stevens to come on come well, I just the think way. Matt already is so unfortunate that he just yeah. he can't get into that team because Seamus is there and the Seamus finished the season quite strongly Matt probably had a better season overall I don't think anyone would really argue that but yeah. I do think if Seamus is, is at the top of his game he's the captain he's the experience he's he's, he's captain in the Euros he's been there you know what I mean yeah, it's amazing how strong we are in, in that position yeah yeah. And it's even Cyrus Christie doesn't even get in the squad anymore. Yeah, it's unfortunate, really, that our two probably most high-profile high pro, high profile players in the Premier League are both playing in the same position. Yeah. I would definitely go for Seamus Coleman, though, because I just think with Matt Doherty, look, he's been the, the best Irish player in the Premier League by a country mile mm. this season. I think Seamus, like you said, at the end of the season started to come strong again. It's always going to take him time to recover from the, an mm. injury like that. It was always going to take him maybe six, nine months of yeah. playing to build himself back up. I think the game that's in it, you need experience. And plus, I don't know about Matt Doherty playing as a right back. How strong is he defensively? Because everything I've seen of him this season that's impressed me has been going forward. It's true, yeah. So I, I think this is like horses for Christmas. It has to be Seamus Cole. Even when you're talking about, you know, Kyo being there, some people don't want them. I think you need your experienced heads out mm. there now. Well, what I see is looking at Coleman. And obviously, I'm an Everton fan. The games he kept clean sheets against Arsenal, Liverpool, uh, Man United, Chelsea, against Hazard, Salah, you know, the list goes on. In that regard, uh, Obama Yang, you know, these players who were scoring goals for fun, Seamus kept them quiet, you know what I mean? Yeah. And not just him individually, mm. but as I say, he finished the, the season quite strongly and really t turned what was a negative season for himself into a really positive. And, uh, you know, obviously then we had the two wins that took us top of the group then as well. So he did finish the season quite strongly. He'll be say the season's not over yet, which yeah. I like hearing them say because they want they, all they're focused on is, you know, yeah, they're, not, they're not worried about the holidays, yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you yeah. think maybe though, lads, well I've I've always often looked at it with, with Coleman and with Darty and thought, if you're playing at home, that's the game not to play the two of them. Right, I know Mick's pretty much said he's not going to try it again, but I think the likes of this game would actually be the perfect game to have the two of them on the right hand you side. You mean that like Darty would be providing the cover as well? As well, have yeah. two because you know. Let's be realistic. So like, be so like when Darty played at home to Denmark and Christie was the yeah. well, he was playing centre mid. Yeah, that then, was. But he was covering yeah. that area. Yeah. 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 So I, I think that it, you'd often you'd see a lot of big managers doing that as well in the club game. You'd see them kind of playing a left back and, a, and another left back or a wing back in front of them in a big game away or something. Because yeah, you've got you've got two running, players yeah. who are thinking defensively. Yeah, you know and if, what I mean? if Coleman Coleman goes past them, Doherty can sit back. It, exactly. I yeah, think I yeah. think horses for courses. That actually wouldn't be a bad move for this game, though. To be honest. Yeah, I think it's as you said, it is an option more for an away game, where you're going to get a result. More so than a home game where you're playing against a Gibraltar yeah. or somewhere yeah, that, that yeah. You, you're looking to attack and you're looking to score goals. Mm, well, I'd actually flip it the, the other way around because it'll more than likely be a four three three. So you'd want someone who's just predominantly going to attack them, like maybe someone like an Odell. But we'll come to that when we do our starting eleven show. So you'll check that out when we get to it. But I just think he'd be too far forward if that is the case. If it's if it's a four three three and he has the two of them on it, so I just don't think that'll be be that case. But the form guide anyway. So the Denmark. Two Austria nil, Wales one Denmark two Ireland nil Denmark nil Kosovo two Denmark two Switzerland three 
Denmark three, so they've drawn their last three games. I think if you if you look at the, the we said Switzerland game, but they it's were just three crazy. Like you look at, at both both sets of goals. Defensively, both teams were poor. There was no kind of standout goal as such. Yeah. So like it gives you hope that if we make that we will make chances. Just up to see now, can we take them? Yeah. Well, obviously our most you know um, obvious choice of, of you know a tag man would be Shane Duffy from same set pieces that would be our, probably our best chance of scoring a goal I think if, if I go by what Mick says but yeah. that would again be key to someone like Hooverhan's deliveries because I think Robbie Bray didn't really finish the season strongly um, Hooverhan did obviously got promoted and I think he'll be in charge of the set pieces and he didn't do a bad job last time So yeah, especially I think we're going to need a lot of hold up play as well and you look at the way McGoldrick played against Georgia like he needs another big, big performance yeah. for us. Anything that goes up to him kind of has to stick. Yeah. Especially with the likes of Ericsson. You don't want the ball going up and literally going straight back to his feet mm. or out to, out to the wingers. Well, I do think that uh, McGoldrick is a very clever player also. I mean, no, no, not in the Georgia game. A lot of the time he had the ball, he was trying these these really clever, intelligent passes. And, you know, he's got a good assist record for him, albeit he hasn't played that much. But, he, you know, he got the assist for Hendrick. Um, he got in a couple of times obviously against Georgia as well and probably should have scored around the keeper at one point hit the side net and I think he's due a goal for Ireland and it wouldn't yeah, be a bad time for him to get a goal absolutely yeah listen if he gets two, if he gets two quick players around him that can get up get up quick you hold up the ball as you said he can pick a pass mm. so that that could be our way in in around the back of the full backs as well yeah well do you, you'd want to hope so um, you just in regards to your score predictions just, just to end this video, but what would be I'll start with you, Peter? I'm gonna go one one the Irish national score line. Okay. One, one. I think we're gonna win two one. I hope you're right. Yeah, I I think so. I th I think we'll score early and we'll probably concede as usual around the fiftieth minute, and I think we'll nick one at the end. Okay. I do think, as you said, Duffy is gonna have massive game for us. Yeah. And it'll be special with Horan. and the deliveries are just great. Yeah. So your goal scorer. I will we'll go. You don't have to pick theirs, just ask. Um, I'll try. Just like you said, I'll go with McGoldrick. He's due one, isn't he? I think, I think Shane Duffy can work in both ways. I think he can be used as a distraction from safe pieces as well, because they probably have a couple, of, maybe three lads on them. You know what I mean? They'll be looking at that for the main danger. So, yeah, I think, I think McGoldrick. He's full of confidence. He played under Mick before, doesn't he? he looks like a lad who, who's playing with the belief of his manager behind him. So, yeah, I, I'm gonna go with. I think I'll go with Duffy myself. Header, obviously. And I'll go for Callum O'Dowd. I think he's had a good, a good season at Bristol. I'd be surprised if he's there next year. And I think he's playing with full of confidence, especially coming back in after after missing the last games. Fancy it for a goal. Yeah, I'm going to go 1-1. One, one, uh, my goal scorer is going to be Shane Duffy. First goal scorer, get on it. <laughs> so uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks very much for watching. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, as always. Huge thanks to Peter from footballfaithful.com and Paddy Ward from the Republic of Ireland Supporters Club in Mullingar. Thanks for watching.